Hello, I'm Patrick Lindsay, pastor of the Greater Bible Way Missionary Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan. Thank you for tuning in to itswebtv.com. I pray that the word of God that you hear each Sunday is relevant to your lives and that it enriches you in a way that you can walk more closely in his steps and in his will. We pray that you, if you have the opportunity, will stop by and worship with us at 1525 Townsend Street in Detroit, Michigan. Again, thank you for tuning in to our worship service on itswebtv.com. You know, it's kind of funny. I need to start out by saying, you know, a lot of times, um, I think in my mind, I know y'all going, yeah, I'm But I do, I think in my mind, I said, you know what? Um, I was going to preach on something else. And all the while, I was telling, I was, I was telling Rochelle, I said, you know what? This is what I'm going to preach on. But as, as, as it happens every time I preach, God says, do it. That's not it. This is what I want you to preach on. Last, what I was going to preach on, just to give you a little preview, because it may come one day, is the least of these. Because we've been talking about, you know, um, God taking ordinary people. And having to do extraordinary things. Yes, sir. So I was going to talk. I was out there talking about Mary, Moses, David. <laughs> and then talk about how God used them to do mighty work. Right, God right. Had, and then God had these other plans. And, you know, it was weird. One of my friends was going through something. And I talked about nothing was too big for God to handle. And it came to me. And the thing that came to me was the story of David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. And I talked about we all have our Goliath that we're trying to slay. Mm -hmm. And so the title of my message this morning is, What is your Goliath? And how do you slay? You know, the scripture lesson can be found in 1 Samuel 17 through 45 through 47. Come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the of the armies of Israel, who you have defied. Mm -hmm. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds That's and the wild word. animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Yeah. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As I said earlier, we talked a lot over the past several Sundays about ordinary people doing great and powerful things. So this Sunday is no different. Today I want to focus on the story of David and Goliath. Nearly all of us have heard this story before in babies, children, young adults, adults, and I would like to say, seasoned adults. But before I get before I get to the story of David and Goliath, I want to go back to, to uh, 1 Samuel 16, where Samuel annoys David. But I got to go back even further before I talk about that. So I just want to give a little background. Mm -hmm. um, the Lord rejected Saul as king, right. so there was a dynamic there. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let's move forward. What the Lord said to Samuel: How long will you mourn for Saul? Since I have rejected him as king of Israel, God then told Samuel to fill his horn with oil and go to Jesse of Bethlehem and tell him that he had chosen one of his sons right. to be the king. Samuel asked the Lord, how could he go because he thought that Saul would kill him? The Lord then told him to take a heifer with him and say to him, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And then God told him that he revealed to him what he is to do. God then said to him, you are to anoint the one that I indicate. Mm -hmm. Now, how many of us, if God told us to do something and we think that we're going to get killed, that we're going to keep going? All right, I mean, if we sit back all the time and, and, and you know, God tells you to do something, then we know God ain't going to 
still you're wrong. So right. think about that. I need you to go do this. And you're going to be, but Lord, I'm going to be killed. <laughs> and God says, go ahead, I got your back. And you, and in your mind, you're like, okay, Lord, I'm going to do it. But he, he, he tell me to do what? I'm going to get, uh, okay, Lord, I trust you. We, we, you know, we need to think like that. So back to the story. The Lord told Samuel to not consider the appearance or height, right, for he right, has rejected right. him. The Lord doesn't look at the things that people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. I repeat that. The Lord looks at the yes, heart. Sir. Jesse called his sons to pass by Samuel, and not one of the seven was the anointed one. Mm. Do you hear me? Not one of the seven. Seven. Not one of them was the anointed one. Jesse was in as. And he said, well, there's one more. But he's tending the sheep. Samuel said, go get him. And then the Lord identified David as the anointed one. Samuel took the, Lord, took the horn of the oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. Now the spirit of the Lord had departed Saul. And an evil spirit from the yeah. Lord tormented him. Saul's attendant said to him, See, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord command his servants here to search for someone who can play the lyre. He will play when the evil spirit from God comes on you, and you will feel better. Mm -hmm. Now we know for me, music always makes things better. For me. <laughs> I mean, I, you right. know, I said it earlier. Right. You know, I've been stuck on Beverly Crawford if... God don't do anything else. Amen. He's done enough. Amen. That's what that's what music is about. Right, right. You know, music is about soothing. Right. Now, I'm not talking about all this other stuff where you're sitting around twerking. <laughs> and all whatever that other stuff is. I'm right, talking about right. music that, that soothes your soul and relaxes your mind. Yes, sir. And gets you focused on what you need to focus on. Uh -huh. I'm not talking about all other stuff. So, young folk, I don't want you to think I'm talking about Big Sean. Playing his music and Young Jeezy and right, right. Lil Weezy and all the other rhymes, that Weezy, Jeezy, and all the other folk, they don't soothe your mind. Right. What they do is they stroke, they stroke your passion. And I don't mean they stroke your passion in a good way. I mean they stroke your passion, the passion that you're not supposed to have right now. Right. Right. All right. Young folk. All right. Good. You know I'm interacting. So back to the story. So Saul said to his attendant, find someone who plays and bring it to me. So one of the servants answered, I've seen the son of Jesse of Bethlehem, who knows how to play the lyre. He's a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and is a fine looking young man. And the Lord is with him. Then Saul sent messages to Jesse and said, send me your son, David, who is with the sheep. So Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat, and sent them with his son David to Saul. David came to Saul, entered his service. Saul liked him very much, liked him so much, and David became one of his armor bearers. Then Saul sent word to Jesse, saying, Allow David to remain in my service, for I'm pleased with him. Allow him to remain, because I'm pleased with him. Why? Because David was obedient. David, David knew his calling. David knew what he needed to do. God had a plan. All along, you'll see it. You'll see it unfolding through this story. So, whenever the spirit from God came on David, David would take up his lyric and play. Then relief would come to Saul. He'd feel better, and the evil spirits would leave. Him. Now that you know the backstory of David is anointing. Let's get to what I talked about: the story of David and Goliath. I wanted to give you a, a, a history of their dynamic right. and how David got where he was. And, and just to show you how, get you to how special David was. I mean, because without that, you just think David was just some guy who had a slingshot and a rock and, and hit Goliath and knocked him out and killed him. And, and that's when you hear the story of David and Goliath as children, you don't get that story. You get, you know, ah, there he is. It's more to it than that. Right. You know, David came a long way. That's right. Came a long way. And, and God was, was, took people a long way to get to him. Right. To make him who he is. That's right. So now, story of David and Goliath. The Philistine army had gathered for war against Israel. The 
two armies faced each other on opposite sides of a steep valley. Philistine, a giant named Goliath, was over nine feet tall and wearing full armor. And he came out for 40 days, mocking, cursing, challenging the Israelites for a fight, to a fight. Saul, the king of Israel, and the whole army, they were scared as all get out of Goliath. They were scared. I mean, you got this nine foot giant and his, and his army. They scared. Right. They scared. So one day, David, again, David, the youngest son of Jesse, was sent to the battle lines by his father to bring back news of his brothers. You know, they, you know, Jesse was like, dude, just go tell me how your brothers are. Come back. Go tell me how your brothers are and come back because they are important. They fight. I just need you to go over there and just tell me if they're okay. Think about that. He's been anointed. But, I, but his job is to go and bring back news and see if they are right. Really? So, David, who was obedient to his father, did what he was asked. But while there, David, David heard the lion shouting his daily diss, as I like to call it, for 40 days on the Israelites, and he saw the great fear in the men of the Israelite army. David asked, Who is this uncircumcised, uncircumcised Philistine? that he should defy the armies of God. And just to know the clarification, when you were uncircumcised, it was said that you had no relationship with God, or it's somebody who relies on false gods or idols. Not lost in the story is the fact that Saul, the king, was nearly seven feet tall himself. Right. Amen? Right. So he wasn't a little fella. Right. You know, he wasn't a little fella at all. And he was scared. I mean, think about that. I mean, you know, I'm all of five foot six strapping, <laughs> standing up here, and it'll be like me. And I, when I say this, you know, I'm interactive, and I'm not trying to be funny up here, but it'll be like Big Mike coming in here, being all of six three, looking at me going, ah, ah, ah. You're almost seven feet. Amen. So now. You would have thought that he'd be the one to lead this army as he towered over the troops who were smaller than him. But he was too chicken. He was scared. Now, David, he volunteered to fight. Now, David was all of four foot and some change. All right? So when you see the story of David and Goliath in the picture, you see this nine foot cat, and you see this little four foot cat. And when you look at the picture, I always wondered, he really is a giant. So in the, in the pictures, you don't know. You don't think nine feet. You think that he's like a behemoth, 12 feet. And, you know, David was this six-foot guy. But when you read the story, you find out as you as you get into the word that that's not the case. Right. That there really isn't that much of a difference. So, you know, David, David agreed that he was going to fight Goliath because um, Saul finally said, dude, you pretty much been bugging me. Go ahead. Fight him. But take this armor. And Saul, Saul put it on him. But because Saul was seven feet, the army, the, the armor was so big and heavy. He said, I can't fight this. You know, I can't move. And so what he did, he said, I'm just gonna wear my robe. I got my shepherd's staff, my slingshot, and a pouch full of stones. So then he walked up to Goliath. And the giants just cursed him. He insulted him. He threatened him like he did everybody else. Now, how many times have we, I mean all of us, had to fight our own Goliath? And how do we handle it? Now don't answer now because I know everybody wants to. But I want you to think about it as I finish the story. Because, but, but I also want you to take some time between now and when you do have time. Write down what your personal Goliath is and what your challenge is to slaying it. Now back to the story. David said to the Goliath, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. It is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, 
for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you he will give all of you into our hands. As Goliath moved in for the kill, David reached into his bag, and he slung one of his stones at Goliath's head. Finding a hole in the armor, the stone sank into the giant's forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. David then took Goliath's sword, killed it, and then cut off his head. When the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. Right. <laughs> they turned and ran. So four foot sixty. They turned and ran. So the Israelites pursued, chasing and killing them and plundering their camp. Again, greater by the way, what are your Goliaths and how do you handle slaying them? All right. Goliaths can come in many forms. Goliaths represent anything that's opposed to God. Come on, son. Basically, what is the devil using to stop you from being the Christians God wants us to be? Again, what is the devil using to stop us? from being the Christians God wants us to be. Good question. Now you may be wondering, Good question. what are some of the Goliaths that people face? There's the Goliath of resentment. There's the Goliath of fear. There's the Goliath of loneliness. There's the Goliath of guilt and shame. Now, here's a good, there's a Goliath of worry. There's the Goliath of, of discouragement. There's the Goliath of jealousy. There's the Goliath of depression. There's the Goliath of hopelessness, bitterness, pride, selfishness, hate, and doubt. Now, I'm sure that there are some Goliaths that I haven't even mentioned that are going through your mind right now. But know that you're armed with the armor of God just as David was. You see, when you try to arm yourself in the armor of man's work, right, right. like David tried initially when he put that armor on and he couldn't move and he couldn't do anything, most of the time, it don't work out for us, does it? Right. When you try to do it your way, does it work out? No. You put that heavy armor on, you think you're protected. You did everything on, you could, and you got the armor on, you walk out your door, you say, oh, I'm protected. And guess what? That rock hit right in and clunked you in the middle of your head. And you and you on the ground. Come on, son. And if you ain't dead, you're on, your ground, you're on the ground begging God, saying, I'm protecting myself. And look what happened. But you protected yourself in man's world. That's right. But there are times when we see things as this world, but not with God. He gives us our five stones and sling to fight, even the biggest Goliath. We have to have faith in him and the belief that he will give us the strength to slay that Goliath that may be in the way of letting us get closer to God. Right. If we go back to the story of David and Goliath, David's faith made him look at Goliath from a different angle. Amen? Amen. Right. He looked at Goliath not as a, you know, as a different name. He didn't look at him as a giant. Right. Goliath was simply a man that defied God. I'm going to say that again because I, I, don't, I don't know if nobody heard that. Right. <laughs> Goliath was simply a man that defied right. God. Right. He wasn't a giant. David said, <laughs> your false idols, yeah. your cussing at us, and, and, and your defiance of God ain't right. That's right. I'm about to fix it. Come on, son. I'm about to take you out. That's it. That's it. David looked at this challenge from the vantage point of God being with him. If we look at our Goliath, pro our Goliath problems and impossible situations from a God perspective, not a man perspective, but God's perspective, we'll realize that God will fight for us and with us. When we rely on God, we see more clearly and can fight Satan more effectively. Take a page from David in the face of insults and fearful circumstances. And remember that God's opinion is the only one that matters. Right. Young folk, I'm going to say that again. Because the old folk, they hear it. But I need young folk to really understand what I'm saying. That your Goliath may be that bully that walk up to you and call you names and curse at you and say all these things to you that ain't godly. You know what I'm saying? Young folk, you hear what I'm saying? What I'm trying to tell you is that these folk is going to come up to you and they're going to say, you know, such and such, you are this, you are that. But the only opinion that matters is God's opinion. So they can say whatever they want to say because you know what? You're a child of God. You're not a child. You're not a child of theirs. You're a child of God. And if God thinks enough to save you and show mercy and grace every single day as you grow up, and as you mature, 
What does it matter that some insignificant guy or girl in your eyes calls you a name? Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense, young folk, that somebody can call you a name and you get mad? And it don't matter. They're not, are they your judge? All right. But as I said before, right, Goliaths are real. They are not part of your imagination. Goliaths are problems, pressures, pains that we have to face from time to time in our lives. Goliaths oftentimes cause major difficulties in life and brings with it the possibility of life-threatening situations. More than likely, there's someone at Greater Bible Way that's dealing with a Goliath right, right now. Right, sir. Right, sir. All right. You have the slings and the stones right here. <coughs> right That's it. Here. That's it. You have the slings and stones right here to fight your Goliath. You just have to stay immersed in the Word. The Bible gives you, gives you a clear strategy on how to defeat your Goliath. You just have to study your game plan. Amen? Yes, sir. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, piles around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. I need you to understand that it does not make a difference how good of a Christian you are. Think that you are or want to be. There are times when God will appoint you and let you face your Goliath. But more importantly, this is what you, again, you need to understand. He's not going to let you move on in your Christian walk until you confront your Goliath. All right, All right sir. All right. I'm going to say that one more time because I think that's important. Remember when you said that's important? Because <laughs> it's important that God ain't going to let you move on until you confront your Goliath. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if you keep hiding from it, you done, you, you've done one of these things I mentioned earlier. You hide, you hide from your Goliath. So what does that mean? Yes, sir. That means you ain't putting trust in the Lord. Right. You hide. Right. You ain't saying that, that God is going to protect me. You ain't saying that I got my, I got my sling and stones yeah. in here. Yeah. You saying I got, I got it, but I don't know how to use it. Okay. I, I can't figure this out. I don't know how to use it. But how unfortunate is it that we face man's world or Goliath each day on man world on man's world terms? And too often we try to use its weapons against it. Imagine if David used Goliath's weapons against him. It would be game over. It would have been a wrap. David would have been crushed. Right, right. Would have been done. So those weapons were Goliath's strength. He had to use God's weapons. In life, God's weapons are not as obvious, but they never kill us. Now, how do you confront your Goliath? The story gives us several examples. One look, one look at the past victory. For example, David was a great herdsman who at one point in time kept his father's sheep and not one was lost in spite of the lion and bear taking one of the lambs. Remember that God has given you many victories, both small and large, where the odds seem unsurmountable. But you won. He prepares you daily for your future victories as well. Also, there are those private victories. You know, the ones that nobody knows about that you can thank you, Jesus. You know, those, those victories that nobody knows and they, they'll never know. But what those victories does is those private victories prepare you for those public victories that everybody's going to see. Come on, son. Amen. They prepare you for those ones that, that everybody's looking at you going, oh, they about to fail. I can't wait for this. They about to fail and I get to say, ha-ha, I told you so. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. These are the ones, like I said, that they expect you to fail on. Right. But it's how you handle these, big, these these things, these circumstances that will determine your outcome. That's right. Again, my young folk, do you hear what I just said? And I'm not picking on the young folk, but I think it's important as these young folk go through high school and middle school and elementary school that they understand. Because right now, there's folk killing themselves because somebody said something right, to them. Right, Bullying. Right, right. Bullying. That's their life. Right there. And you need to learn how to fight that, young people. Right. And the way to fight is to stay in this. Yes, sir. This is the way to fight it. Don't, you know, don't try to fight it man's way. Because one of two things will happen. That bully really might be a good life to beat the crap out you. <laughs> or you might turn around and beat the crap out of them. But does that make it any, does right. it make it any better? Are you?
Are you any better off than you were? No, because guess what you are now? Now nah, you're the bully. You're the bully. Fight, fight, because fight your Goliath right here. Yes, sir. Let it roll. Well, oh, you see, these small victories that that David had that prepared him to fight Goliath, they prepared him for that moment. Remember, if God gave you the strength before, he'll give it to you one more time. And he'll give it to you again after that. And he'll give it to you again after that. He'll just keep giving it to you. Because that's the kind of God we serve. He'll just keep giving it to you. But like Goliath, like David, Goliath can turn your weakness into strength. And your Goliath strength into a weakness so you can slay. Again, greater Bible way, how are you going to defeat your Goliath? Remember, greater Bible way, we are all armed with the weaponry to yes, defeat. Sir. Yes, sir. Any Goliath that comes our way. We just have to understand that our slaying stones are stronger and more powerful than any weapon or armor that Goliath has to fight against us. Amen? That's right. Now I ask you one last time. One last time. Now I'm going to take my seat. How are you going to defeat your Goliath? 